Okay, let's start our Thirsty Thursday for today, and we're going to talk more about our skin, what we put on our skin, how it affects our skin, and maybe some things that you can do about that yourself. So here we go. How many products, do you realize how many products that you put on your body every day? If you're not sure, go count them. Thanks, Sharon. Glad to see that I'm up and running. Go count them. You put on creams and lotions. You use toothpaste. And, of course, I haven't talked about toothpaste, but you use perfumes and makeup. You use all this stuff. They said the average person uses nine different products a day. I know I knew, use more than nine different products a day. So you have to be mindful about what you're putting on your skin. And did you know that the cosmetic industry does not have to be required to do safety tests? They don't have to. So the companies continue to use the toxic, toxic chemicals in their products. And why are they doing that? Because one thing is they're not banned. And the other thing is they're cheaper usually. So that's why you're getting the crap in your products. So our skin has two million holes. Okay. So things get in some of those and they get into your bloodstream and they, and we talked about this last week. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore. And we know that our skin protects us but that still will absorb things that are small. So you don't know what those things are, but the, it makes a difference. A lot of things make a difference of what your body is going to absorb. The size of the chemical or whatever the product is. The smaller, if it's small, it's going to get into your bloodstream. Your skin temperature. If your skin is warmer, it's going to absorb more. So. That's a thought for me is to say, okay, what sunscreen am I putting on me? What sunscreen am I putting on my kids? Because they're going to absorb whatever I put on their bodies right now. Your skin integrity. If your skin is damaged, it's going to absorb more stuff. The chemical concentration. If it's more chemicals in there, the likelihood of you absorbing is going to be a lot more. How long are these things on your skin? The longer they're on your skin, the, the more risk you have absorbing those chemicals into your body. And where are you putting the stuff? Where are you putting these things? On your face? In your hair? On your arms? The, where you put it has more of a reason of why you're going to absorb more. The thinner skin will absorb more. So let's talk about ways that you can, uh, you know, do what things that you can do to um, minimize your risk for chemical exposures. First is start small. What do you use a lot of? If you use a lot of a lotion, I would question what's in my lotion. So what are the products that you use every day? And what are the products that you leave the longest on your body? I don't know if, after I take a shower, I lather my body with lotion. It stays on my body until I take a shower again. So that's a long time. I want to know what's in my lotion. So, but you need to start small. I mean, you, most people don't, don't have a lot, a lot of money to, to transfer by everything at once. Maybe you can. Maybe you should, depending on what you're doing. How about your shampoos and your conditioners? These tend to absorb more into the skin due to the absorption rate of your scalp. So if you're putting a lot of fragrance from your shampoos and conditioners on your hair, just a warning. Antibacterial anything. Get rid of it. Don't use it. It's more harm than good. So hopefully you're not using it. And if it's overused, a lot of people are washing their hands these days. 
If it's overused, you're killing good bacteria along with the bad. So take advantage of sites that will tell you what's in your prod products. I use Environmental Working Group a lot, www.ewg.org. And it, you can look up each ingredient. It will tell you what it is. And the lower the number, the better. They will give you a green from 1 to 3, I think it is, yellow from 4 to 7, and red from 8 to 10. You don't ever want to be in the red. But a lot of the products are in the red. You can look up product, some of the products themselves. You can also look up ingredients on ewg.org. There are other ones that I have not tried, but um, that's the one I go to all the time. If you don't recognize it, don't buy it. So you should always read the ingredients, but the ingredients are difficult. You need to start looking them up. You have something in your bathroom right now, get that, get that bottle out. Look up the ingredients somewhere. Find out how harmful it is and you might be surprised at what you're going to find in there. Shop local. So a lot of people made homemade organic products. Start checking them out. Maybe they do good too. Even better, start using Young Living products. We know, I'm telling you what's in them. We know what's in them. Start using those. They have some wonderful products out there. The other thing is if you can't change everything immediately, Try, and you know something's going to be on your skin for a long, long time. Put a layer of coconut oil and then use your other product first. I mean the next. Also, you can use organic lip balm. And then if you got to put that lipstick on there that stays all day, I worry about that. How can anything stay all day and be good for you? Just think about that too. So anyway, it's exposure. It's how much chemicals is in your product. It's where you put it on your body, how thin your skin is. And you should just trust the Young Living products and start using them. That's it for today.